Hello, bonjour. This is Paul Spivak-Sladowski, du Benevol Canada. I'm with Volunteer Canada, and I'm looking forward to showing you a new tool we've developed in partnership with Manulife Financial to bridge volunteer experience to career development. First, I'll begin by introducing you to the Skills Plus tool. Then I'll uh, walk you through a scenario that will help situate skills and competency development within community investment programs. I'll provide a little bit of background information and context, define some key terms, and then we'll get to test out some of the tools together. Toutes les matériaux et les outils sont disponibles en anglais et en français, et cette présentation est aussi disponible en français. So this presentation and all the tools and resources are available in both English and French, and I'll walk you through it and let you know how you can access them. So as I mentioned, the Skills Plus tools are part of a series called Building the Bridge, New Strategies to Engage Today's Volunteers. We uh, developed these tools and resources in response to our research findings in Bridging the Gap, where we looked at the gaps between what Canadians were looking for in volunteering and how organizations are currently engaging volunteers. And we had a particular interest in youth, baby boomers, family volunteers, and employer-supported volunteers, or workplace volunteers, or corporate volunteers, known by different names. But our interest in this Skills Plus tool is focusing on supporting workplaces and organizations in um, aligning volunteer experience with core competencies and skills development. We wanted to develop a tool that could facilitate that linkage, and it is a, a benefit to nonprofits so that nonprofit organizations can structure their volunteer programs and volunteer opportunities to access workplace skills and competencies. It's also a benefit to workplaces so that they can strategically support employees in their volunteer search and meet community needs and competency development at the same time. An example might be an employer has just uh, carried out a performance assessment and there may be some performance goals for the coming year. And this tool can help an employee and an employer select a volunteer experience that can help develop and meet those learning objectives for the year. And both volunteer organizations and workplace can use this tool as the basis to define and measure benefits, value, and the return on investment of employer-supported volunteering. So what do we have in the tool? First of all, it's a volunteer opportunity template. And as I mentioned, the template has been designed so that an organization can articulate the skills and competencies required for the volunteer position, but it also will list opportunities to develop new skills and competencies. It will also show you what occupations also uh, benefit from the, the specific uh, core competencies that are being developed in the volunteer opportunities. Then we have 19 sample volunteer opportunities. We have a competency matrix, which lists all kinds of skills and competencies that will be demonstrated throughout the sample volunteer opportunities and, again, relate directly to a number of occupations that require those core competencies. We have um, a community investment scenario, which will uh, be an exercise that you can do in your organization with your employee group um, as a professional development activity or simply as a, a way of understanding the, the various benefits that employer-supported volunteering has within a community investment strategy. And finally, we'll do um, a skills-based volunteering card game. I'll be able to demonstrate that and show you how you can access that as another way of looking at the relationship between people's educational and professional experience, talents, and hobbies, and the volunteer opportunities that they may be able to contribute to those skills and competencies, either by transferring it, sharing it with the organization, or further developing it for themselves. And of course, the uh, tool has this presentation that I'm showing you now, which you will be able to use in your own organizations and workplaces. So let me show you the tool now. It's called Skills Plus, Bridging Volunteer Experience to Core Competencies and Occupations. And the first feature is a competency matrix. So you'll see we have a matrix that lists 
a variety of core competencies that you could see them being developed through volunteer experience, but you could also see them linking to various occupations. So here's how we've categorized them. We start with interpersonal competencies, and you see things like client service, team building, collaboration. Then we move to a number of communication skills and competencies. So we have interpersonal communication, communicating in plain language, public and media relations, and a number of others. Then we have a group of organizational skills. So you can see we have analysis, managing meetings and groups, project management, system thinking. Then we look at knowledge, increasing your knowledge. So you could have increased knowledge about the nonprofit and voluntary sector, an understanding of diversity, community knowledge and awareness, and of course self-knowledge. We have a number of skills and competencies related to fundraising, related to technology or office administration, leadership, and personal qualities. So unlike some matrix that focus on hard, concrete skills, this matrix has skills and core competencies, which include aptitudes and personal qualities that we've mentioned here. So how this matrix works in this Skills Plus tool is that you look at the matrix and select a competency that you're interested in developing further. So let's look at leadership. Perhaps you're interested in learning and practicing your competency in motivating others. So we'll look here and we'll select one of the numbers next to the competency. And it's brought us to the volunteer opportunity, the sample we have here, of a minor sports convener. So the Volunteer opportunities are all organized in the same way. They start with the goal, the goal of the opportunity. It's a minor sports convener, and the goal is to coordinate a successful season of children's minor sports, including recruiting and supporting coaches and officials, scheduling games, and ensuring that the game standards are followed. So that's a summary and the main goal of that volunteer opportunity. It, it lists the time commitment the benefits of the volunteer opportunity, because one of the things that we learned in our research, and that many of us in the field have been aware of for a number of years, that for any relationship to work, you want everyone's needs to be met. So volunteers are interested in contributing to your organization and contributing to the community. In addition to that, are interested in developing themselves, and they may have some personal goals. So here are some of the benefits provide a fun, healthy recreational experience for children and families, try something new that will increase your skills, work with other volunteers who want to support children, and gain satisfaction from a well-organized and executed minor sports season. So those are some of the benefits. They list the competencies required, and then list the competencies developed. And this is the section that we focused on in this tool. We focused on those competencies that can be further developed through a volunteer opportunity that will also relate to a number of core uh, competencies in occupations. So you see here in the minor sports convener that the competencies that can be developed are planning and coordinating, motivating others, team building, manage meetings and groups, problem solving, supervision, event management, conflict resolution, sensitivity, and adaptability. And then below that, in each of the positions that we have here, we have related occupations. So related to this minor sports convener, there could be supervisors, general office and administration support clerks, administrative officers, executive assistants, coaches, recreation, sports, and fitness program supervisors, and program leaders. And if you click on any of these related occupations, it will bring you to, let's look at coaches. It will bring you to the National Occupational Classification System that is hosted by Human Resources and Skills Development Canada, and you'll see here the listing of coaches. It'll describe the position. It'll give you a variety of titles that are often used to describe this type of position, and then it'll talk about main duties, employment requirements, and so on. So as you can see, after you've looked at the National Occupational Classification System site on Human Resource and Skills Development Canada, where you've been able to look at those related occupations, you just go to the bottom of your screen, click back onto the Skills Plus 
PDF icon, and you get back to the position. And on every page that has a sample volunteer opportunity description, at the top of the page, there's a button for matrix. You click back on that, and you get back to the competency matrix. Why don't we look at another one? So if you're interested, for example, in developing your communication skills, and perhaps you're interested in having more opportunities to practice your public speaking, and your presentation skills. There are four different volunteer opportunities that could bring you those opportunities. Let's look at number 12 here. And we see public speaker. The goal of this position is to build community awareness and support for the organization by speaking to community groups about its activities, accomplishments, and partnership opportunities. And again, following that same format as the previous one, we have the time commitment, the benefits, the competencies required, and the list of competencies that can be developed. And here again you see network building, public and media relations, communicating in plain language, fund development, motivate others, community awareness and knowledge, continuous learning, and public speaking and presentations. And here are some related occupations. Sales, marketing, and advertising. Let's look at that. And here we're going back to the Human Resource and Skills Development Canada's National Occupational Classification site. And we see sales, marketing, and advertising managers. Some sample titles. We have Internet Communications Manager, Web Communication Manager, Web Marketing Manager, Advertising Director, and so on. A list of duties and requirements of the position. So we go back to the Skills Plus, we go back to the Matrix, and here you can choose whatever you are interested in. And that's how the Skills Plus tool works through the Competency Matrix. The next component of the Skills Plus tool is a Community Investment Committee decision-making grid. And this is a scenario we've developed in order to help those in nonprofit voluntary organizations, as well as those in the workplace, to look at a variety of benefits of employer-supported volunteering programs to the community and to a workplace in um, the context of a more robust, integrated community investment strategy. And so while the Skills Plus tool focuses on competency development uh, related to volunteer experience, we're interested in organizations as well as workplaces being sensitized to the place that skills development and competency development holds within a more uh, robust and broader community investment uh, strategy. Okay, so here we have a community investment committee decision-making grid. The scenario that we've created for this exercise is that you are a member of the community investment committee. The committee meets once a month and it reviews all the requests they've received from organizations for either donations, sponsorships, gifts in kind, pro bono services, and employer-supported volunteering. And so if you look at the grid, it has a number of dimensions and benefits to the workplace for this opportunity. So there could be a marketing benefit. There could be the opportunity for skills and competency development. There could be a staff social activity component to the activity. There's a consideration for whether or not it's financially viable. Does it fit within the budget of the workplace? employee support. Do the employees feel compelled and interested in supporting this activity? Community needs. Does this meet a uh, priority in the community? And are there others investing in this issue? Then there's the dimension of organizational capacity where you look at the organization making the proposal. Does it have the capacity to carry out the activity? What's its reputation? And what is its track record? So you can see there's a variety of considerations that a community investment committee would take into account when making a decision. So the scenario suggests that you in, work in a group to determine how you would weight each of those considerations. So for example, when you're reviewing a proposal, would you consider the skills and competency development to be ranked out of 20, and 20% 20 of your decision would be make, made on its um, 
possibility for developing skills and competency, would you feel that meeting community needs should be 30% of your consideration? Would you think that whether it's financially viable should be 20% and so on? So what you would do as a group is determine how you would rate the proposal, ranking it through each of these considerations so that the total is 100. And in having your conversation, you would be able to discuss and explore some of these themes. For example, if we're looking at marketing, will this provide a promotional opportunity for your workplace? So then you would want to become aware, who are the participants of the event? So if it's a request to sponsor a community event, you'd be interested in how many people have uh, participated in the past. What are the demographics of those who have participated? And is this a group that you want more profile and visibility around for this event and that this event might be the perfect vehicle you're looking for to gain uh, credibility and profile in a certain market? So those are the kinds of conversations you might have when you're determining how you would weight each of these considerations in making your decision. Okay, now let's look at some background and the context of volunteering as professional development. As I was mentioning earlier, that employer-supported volunteering and looking at the link between volunteer experience and the development of core competencies for various occupations is something that many are interested in being able to access and develop more fully. However, it comes within the context of a uh, great deal of research that has been done in Canada and around the world that looks at the benefits of employer-supported volunteering. So first we'll look at this uh, impact study that was done by Deloitte, and it showed that 91% of human resource managers believe that incorporating skills-based volunteering would provide valuable employee training and development. However, only 16% of companies regularly and intentionally offer these opportunities. So this was a key finding of this 2008 survey that was done. I mentioned the report that we did last summer, Bridging the Gap, which looked at the gap between what Canadians are looking for in volunteering and how organizations are currently engaging volunteers, and that was a partnership between Volunteer Canada and Manion Life Financial. And the findings show that employer-supported volunteers tend to want more focused skills-based volunteer opportunities. Many like to measure their efforts and know if the time they have contributed has been worthwhile. Yet at the same time, many want their volunteering to be completely different from what their work life has been. And one of the quotations that uh, really resonated with us is someone saying, I don't necessarily want to volunteer in what I do all day at work. An example being that if somebody is working in a bank, they don't automatically want to be placed on a finance committee. And here's some background into the uh, idea of broadening from skills to competency-based approach. So as I mentioned before, when we talk about skills, we're often talking about very concrete skills, very technical skills related to a specific task or activity in an occupation. However, when we talk about competency, we're including attitudes, aptitudes, and personal qualities that make a person suitable and better able to contribute to the commu work community in a workplace. So we have interpersonal skills, communication, organizational, increased knowledge, fundraising, technical office, and the Canada Survey of Giving, Volunteering, and Participating looked at those particular competencies and when people were asked, have you gained skills and competencies as a result of your volunteer experience? This is what um, people identified. So 66% of people said, in fact, volunteering had increased their interpersonal skills. And 32% said that the volunteering had increased their fundraising skills and so on. So that, we felt, was a valuable um, piece of research for background to our Skills Plus tool. Here are some key terms that we looked at, just so that we're all uh, coming from the same understanding. Many terms are used by different environments and organizations in different ways, but we decided to look at um, a simple, more common definition so that, again, we could 
bridge the gap between organizations in the nonprofit and voluntary sector and workplace so that we're all speaking the same language. So when we talk about employer-supported volunteering, we're talking about a broad range of corporate policies and practices that companies can use to actively encourage and support employee volunteering. An example might be a workplace that allows an employee to volunteer a half day per month on their work time. Another example might be that a workplace would make a financial donation to an organization where an employee volunteers more than 500 hours per year. These are examples of policies and programs that workplaces can undertake and carry out as part of an employer-supported volunteering program. In some cases, employers will organize volunteer group volunteer activities where teams and groups of volunteers from the workplace will uh, work together in an organization. In other cases, it's on an individual basis. But as I mentioned, it's a broad range of policies and programs. When we talk about skills-based volunteering, we're talking about strategic type of volunteerism that incorporates a range of skills to strengthen the operations and services of nonprofit organizations. And that definition comes from the hands-on network. And skills-based volunteering um, focuses on the skills that an individual has or the skills that an individual wants to acquire. And it looks at the opportunities in an organization to either contribute the skills or develop the skills. And an example could be somebody who has just completed an educational program on graphic design and wishes to contribute their skills to an organization, but also to refine their skills somewhat and to have an opportunity, of course, to enhance their profile and their portfolio when they're looking for employment in that area. So in this particular example that I'm giving, an organization would benefit from somebody with um, new knowledge and enthusiasm and the ability to create graphic designs for their organization at the same time as provide an opportunity to that individual to further develop that skill and to enhance their employability. So skills-based volunteering is a way of transferring skills either by offering, uh, further refining, or helping someone else develop those skills. To emphasize what we were talking about earlier, that competencies are broader than skills. It's a combination of skills, knowledge, abilities, qualities, and attitudes that allow employees to optimally perform their jobs. Plus, they add value to the workplace and the community. The skills plus tools clearly link employee competencies with volunteering. The occupational alignment that we chose to connect with, as mentioned earlier, is the National Occupational Classification System. It is uh, hosted by Human Resource and Skills Development Canada, and it is aligned uh, with uh, a classification system that is used in many other regions of the world. So there's an uh, opportunity to transfer the terminology and skills and competencies that you are listing as part of your knowledge base and in your own uh, curriculum vitae and transfer that to other regions of the world as well. But it is based on the National Occupational Classification System that is currently um, adapted and housed um, by Human Resource and Skills Development Canada. And the example that we give here is the sales and marketing and advertising managers. And I showed you that earlier when we were linking from an op a volunteer opportunity. Now let's look at another tool that we've developed. It's a game, a skills-based volunteering card game. And the way it works is that we've created a number of titles or identifiers that somebody may use when they're approaching an organization. So someone might say that I am uh, an MBA student and I want to offer my business knowledge and new research skills in business development to your organization. Somebody might identify themselves as a human resource manager. Someone might identify themselves by their hobby. For example, they might say that they are a whitewater rafter or that they are a stamp collector. So what we've done is we've created a red deck of cards that has a number of different titles or identifiers. 
And then we have a second deck of cards that looks at whether you think of something directly related to that identifier, something indirectly related, or something completely different. So I'm going to show you the game now. And here's the skills-based volunteering deck of cards. So as I mentioned, there's a red deck and a blue deck. And let's look. And this is just showing you the back of the cards for the blue deck. And this deck has direct, indirect, and something completely different. And here I'm going to show you a few examples of what's in the red deck, which have those identifiers, so titles or ways in which people would describe their profession, their hobby, or their education. So here we have a writer. We have a director of stakeholder relations. We have a project coordinator. an environmental protection officer, a junior hockey league player, a TV talk show host, a statistician, and as I mentioned, several others. Some relate to a position in somebody's workplace, some relate to their hobby. So we do have um, whitewater rafter, we have stamp collector, and so on. And the idea is, if, for example, we have Gardner, and let's say from the blue deck we have selected direct. The idea here is that you would think of a volunteer opportunity that is directly related to what a gardener does. So if the gardener is interested in contributing uh, their time and their expertise related to gardening, you might have a position to coordinate the community gardening program. Or perhaps you are a resident and you have a garden and you would like the gardener to volunteer their time to do the gardening for your outdoors. If you selected something indirect, then you would think about the gardener and their expertise and their knowledge and Think of something perhaps that has to do with the environment and nature and um, knowledge of plants. So you may have a landscape committee that determines what would be um, developed in the outdoors. You may have an environmental committee that would be dealing with something that is related to knowledge of plants, but perhaps it's perhaps it's to develop a composting program. And if you selected the card that was something completely different, perhaps you would, again, thinking about the gardener and in your conversation, they may be um, talking about their love of nature and love of outdoors. And perhaps doing something completely different from gardening would be to be a chaperone with a group of teens going on a camping trip. So this game is designed to help you be creative in your thinking, whether somebody wants to contribute their skills that are directly related to their education, hobby, or workplace profession, or whether they want to use some of their skills, but they don't want to do the same thing they're doing all day at work. So that's where you would think of something indirectly related. And perhaps they want something that is completely different and don't want to have it in any way relate to what they're doing at work, but at the same time, they do want to develop and grow and contribute. So that's the game, and it has 26 different um, titles or positions. It has the direct, indirect, and something completely different cards, and you can use it any way you like. So for example, if you are a group of employees trying to brainstorm for things that you could do, you might play the game in order to get your creativity going to think about transferable skills. Perhaps you are a group of 
managers of volunteer resources getting together for a training session, and you might use this as an icebreaker and, again, to introduce the idea of skills-based volunteering. Perhaps you are somebody who is interested in volunteering, and this deck of cards could be in the waiting room, and as you're about to meet with the person in the organization that engages volunteers, you might look through this cards and play it a little bit just to get your own creativity going, to think about how you might connect where you're coming from in either your hobby, your education, or your workplace to what you want to do in your volunteer time. And again, without making any assumptions, you might want to do something directly related indirectly related, or something completely different. So that's the game, and that is the skills-based uh, volunteering deck of cards, which is part of our Skills Plus tools that we've developed to help bridge volunteer experience with occupations and core competency development. So to end off our presentation, I'd just like to say that we have intended to develop these tools, the Skills Plus tools, as a way of helping to make the link between volunteer experience and competency development, whether it's for the purpose of developing your professional expertise and competencies in your workplace, whether it's to enhance your ability to make a career change altogether, or perhaps it's for somebody who's just at the beginning of their career and is really taking an inventory of their competencies and has a desire to develop in different ways, to go in a different direction, or to continue along the path of their career development. And that is the end of our presentation. I hope that you find it useful to be able to adapt the tools in any way that makes sense for you. Again, we're intending this to be available to those who are working in nonprofit and voluntary organizations and are engaging volunteers, for those who are in community investment committees in the process of designing an employer-supported volunteering program, people in human resource development who may be engaged in performance assessment, for managers, for employees who are looking at ways to further develop their competencies. We're also thinking that this would be a benefit to those who are working in the educational sector and who are involved in providing training to human resource managers, to managers of volunteer resources and volunteer programs, and those who are in the public, potential volunteers who really are interested in contributing to the community at the same time as attending to their personal and professional development. And we felt that the quote by John Ruskin was an inspiring one to end by, the highest reward for a person's toil is not what they get for it, but what they become by it. I'd like to acknowledge Reva Cooper from Reva Cooper Consulting, who did the research for the Skills Plus tools and developed the Volunteer Opportunities and Competency Matrix, Wendy Mitchell, the Director of Corporate Citizenship here at Volunteer Canada, the Government of Canada, Human Resource and Skills Development Canada, that funded a skills-based volunteering project, Manulife Financial, our lead partner in the Skills Plus and Building the Bridge campaign that's looking at developing strategies to enhance volunteer engagement. And if you have any questions or ideas or feedback on the tools, please send them my way. My name again is Paula spivak Klodowski, and I'm at Volunteer Canada, and here's my email address. I look forward to hearing from you how you've used this tool and all your ideas for enhancing it for the next generation of Skills Plus. Thank you, et merci.